the demographics of those who serve has evolved since the founding of the military. Women have served in the U.S. military since the Revolutionary War and continue to serve in the military today. Up until World War I, women fought in the military disguised as men. For example, it is estimated that between 400 and 750 women served in the American Civil War. Starting just before World War I, the military created units that were open to women, mostly in auxiliary roles. Examples include the Army Nurse Corps, established in 1901, and the Women's Army Corps, WAC, and women appointed for voluntary emergency service, both active during World War II. Despite their auxiliary status, many of these units served on the front lines. More recently, the military has officially opened opportunities in the military that had not been accessible to women. Service academies admitted women for the first time in 1976, and the policy that prohibited women from serving in units that were tasked with direct combat was ended in 2013. Today, all positions in the U.S. military are open to women. Approximately 16% of active duty and 18% of reserve forces are women. BIPOC service members have been part of the military since the American Revolution, but frequently in subservient, non-combat roles, and almost always separated from white soldiers until after World War II. There are many accounts of the experience of BIPOC in the military, including popular movies such as Glory, which tells the story of the Union Army's first African-American regiment in the American Civil War. President Truman famously issued an executive order in 1948, committing the U.S. government to integrating the military. While the military currently better reflects the demographics of U.S. society as a whole than it did in the past, some notable disparities still exist. The percentage of officers who are white is significantly higher than that of the enlisted forces, particularly among the highest-ranking officers. Representation varies quite a bit among the service branches, with the Marines and Coast Guard having a larger percentage of white service members than the civilian labor force. Interestingly, in all of the services, BIPOC representation is higher among women than among men. The service of LGBTQ individuals in the military has a long and difficult history. The U.S. officially banned gays serving in the military in 1916, but they were excluded historically as well due to the societal condemnation and criminalization of homosexual behavior. Many soldiers accused of homosexual behavior were administratively discharged in a way that was characterized as neither honorable nor dishonorable. Veterans discharged in this way were denied many benefits, including educational benefits under the GI Bill, and were frequently discriminated against in civilian life because of the negative stigma of such a discharge. In 1993, the Don't Ask, Don't Tell DADT policy was instituted by the Clinton administration. This was a small step towards normalization, but gay individuals in the military were still prohibited from actively sharing or showing their sexual orientation. After many protests and legal challenges, legislation to repeal DADT was passed in 2010, and the policy was officially ended in 2011.